It was a style of a different era that caught James's eye earlier this year. Londoners Gary Hillman and Faisal Khan wanted to give the world's smallest production car a new lease of life, needing an £80,000 investment for a 10% stake. Whilst on a family holiday in Florida, I went into a place called Ripley's Believe It or Not, who have all the world records in their museums, and I noticed they didn't have any cars. Very soon, we had an order for two cars at £15,000 each. This gives us the opportunity of 15 million paying customers seeing our cars, therefore an, an, an extraordinary opportunity to sell toys. I don't think it's just the toys. You know, we can develop the brand further to have ball games, remote control, and also uh, could form a character. The replica life-size models of the classic Peel cars were an immediate hit with the Dragons. Yeah. We've got space for one more. How the hell do you get this? <laughs> when they actually got in the cars, driving around, everyone's having fun. You see them enjoying themselves, it makes you feel comfortable. <laughs> Bit of a sort of false dawn, feeling comfortable. They're all happy, you think you've cracked it, and then the questions start coming. <laughs> you want to create board games? remote controls. Give me an idea of how you're going to do that. We're saying that the, the, the brand could be from matchbox toys to remote control toys, a lot of variations. Tell me about the remote control. What's the remote control idea? Well, just a remote control car. We were accused of not having a business plan. And no, we didn't have a business plan going into the day. Guys, can I say, you run the risk of coming across to me as completely half-cocked. Please tell me you've got a business proposition. Maybe, yeah, we could have uh, put a plan together, but we were more thinking about, you know, what we're going to do once we've got a dragon on board, you know, dreaming further on down the line than actually the, uh, the nitty-gritties of a, of, a, of a plan. Normally, people come and say, we've got these cars, legacy of the 1960s. We've sold 20. We've got a massive marketing activity going all over the world. We've got Ripley's. They're really keen on it. They're spending this amount of money. We're making £10,000 a car. That is going to generate us £120,000. With your extra £80,000, that gives us £200,000. And we've arranged with a toy distributor to manufacture these products. Coming into the den without a credible plan is a surefire way of attracting a dragon's ire. But Peter Jones also set about giving the duo a masterclass in den pitching technique. Peter Jones, there's my money. Thank you. <laughs> well, that's why you're sitting there and we're standing here. This is about as half-baked a pitch, which isn't really a pitch, it's a bit of fun. It certainly isn't a business investment. So for that reason, I'm out. Unfortunately for Gary and Faisal, three more dragons followed Deborah by walking away from the deal. Only James remained. Had he spotted an opportunity where his rivals had not? Four dragons out. Last chance saloon. James Khan hasn't said a word to us yet. Like the old saying goes, perhaps, no news is good news. Guys, tell me about this Ripley's contract. So, so far, they've bought how many? They've bought 14 in total, so far. OK, and your instinct is, over the next 12 months, what's your gut feeling as to what you think they're going to buy? Another 12. It was definitely a relief to hear that, you know what, there's someone of these five that see what we see, that believe what we believe. I also understand that, you know, and you've been quite up front, you say, we don't know, because maybe a dragon can help us. Immediately, I thought, he's grasped it. It was, you're feeling more and more comfortable, more and more confident, and then the magic words. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, guys. I'm going to make you an offer. I'll offer you the £80,000, but I'd want 50%. Yeah. Can we have a moment? Sure. I don't think we could have done a deal of 50%. No, we just I don't think couldn't have done it. No. no, because obviously me and Fires were 50 50. And if he takes 50, we're only 25 25. Is it worth doing it, basically? You know, yeah. so, He'll so, have complete control of our yeah. company. What we'd like to do is offer you, from our stock of eight cars, one of each of the models, and 30% of our company. 
and if in two years' time we don't make £80,000, we give you the money back and you keep the cars. When they came back with the counter-offer, I must admit, it did put a smile on my face, because it's what we call in the trade, it's a very technical phrase, it's called a no-brainer. The only thing I could think of, the only phrase that was screaming in my head was, got yourself a deal, guys. <laughs> Good. It's the world's smallest car. There's so many directions we can go in right now. James could see that there is something here which could be a big thing that we just need to develop. Faisal and Gary left the den with that all-important offer. But before a deal is actually signed, a rigorous period of due diligence follows. You all right? There you go. The business plan going forward will be based not only on the sale of the vehicle, but the merchandising around it. And there's no better place to start than the museum where the vehicles are on display. Well, here they are, Fice. Here they are. <laughs> Looks all we came to see. <laughs> this guy makes Peter Jones look uh, a pipsqueak now. Yes, yeah. Oh, they've done us proud. Yeah, excellent. It's superb. This has started the ball rolling. Uh, the first deal was two cars, then 14, got another two cars. We're negotiating now with various cars to make sure they're in, they're in all their 74 locations throughout the world. So, as I say, it's a, it's a big part of our business plan. Drive the steering wheel then, yeah? Press that button on the bottom and drive it, yeah? The example here is exactly why toys need to be made of this car. <laughs> Kids are going to come along, even That's the parents, it. they love the car, they love the experience they have in the car. And they're gonna want to and they're going to want to take a little piece of this experience home with them to remember. What better way to do that than a toy car? But there's work to do to get the toys on the shelves and to fully realise the opportunity the brand can offer. Today, James is at Gary and Faisal's Lewisham HQ to get an update on how the plans of his new business partners are progressing. Hi, James. How are you? Good to see you, Gary. Okay. One of the things that is important, I think, when you came into the den, one of the things that I made, you know, quite clear that the one I'd like to see is a proper business plan. That... Work in progress. I mean, if, if we're honest, where we are now is we've got so many different um, opportunities, mm. um, and obviously there are. It is just myself and Gary, so it's about working smart. Mm. Hopefully, as soon as we do a deal with a big worldwide retail chain or or organisation, you can therefore develop the business plan a, a bit further. This is really exciting and already, you know, in a space of a couple of weeks, I think we've generated a lot of excitement. Yep. Um, so I think you absolutely need to focus and make sure that that business plan, you know, you've got to prioritise on that. And until that point, I'm totally happy to continue, you know, working with you, you know, in an advisory capacity because I want to see this work. Yeah. You know, are, you, are you comfortable with that? Yeah, absolutely. With the deal a step closer, James is a step closer to playing a full part in the future of Peel. Wow. Helping breathe life back into the brand that ceased trading 36 years ago. So what have we got here? This is like a... My little toy store. Is that, the is that actually the original? Original. Yeah, oh, wow. Original, yeah. They're each worth approximately under £1,000 each. The duo may now own the original name, but they share the design with a faithful community of enthusiasts. We don't want to distance ourselves from the Isle of Man. We've, we've just obviously started the venture, and it's, we feel it's very important that to remember the history, the Isle of Man and the British connection. It's very important for us to keep this British, and obviously what we want to make sure is that we now continue um, to, to put this brand in its rightful place, which is on the, you know, the world the world stage. I think it was a really good visit. You know, I think they probably need to do a bit more work as far as the business plan is concerned. They're not quite there yet, but I'm confident. I mean, you know, they're committed, they want to do it, they're really determined. In the meantime, I'm going to continue to support them with their business as an advisor to ensure that they've got every opportunity of getting this business plan crystallized.